Hello, I'm Alan Parsons, and you're watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy zine. So, Alan, nice to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be here. Uh, it's the first time in Vienna since when? Um, I was here um, probably six years ago to um, to do a promotion with uh, a very good friend of mine, Michael Ernst, who um, had a sh uh, uh, an album and uh, a potential musical show called Excalibur, and um, where I came to, to, to promote that. He, he's here tonight, actually. Um, but uh, interestingly, I've never played a show in Vienna. I've played in Graz, uh, but not uh, not Vienna. So this is a first a first experience. It should be good. Um, it's nearly ten years ago that you did the Valid Path album, and you brought out a single in between. Um, isn't it time for a new record yet? <laughs> I don't like to rush these things. You know. <laughs> um, yes, it probably is. Um, but I've I've been doing other things. I've been making. Uh, Educational programs. I've, I, I just did this uh, DVD series about about sound recording, uh, which is called the Art and Science of Sound Recording. I don't know if you've seen that. And um, yes, I mean, um, w I already have a few tracks ready, so um, we'll have to make a decision whether we do another single or whether we'll, uh, you know, combine combine the tracks together and record some new stuff and uh, and uh, put it out. We're we're also going to do a live a, li a live CD and a live DVD, so that's that's definitely coming. And you're doing this all with the current band you're touring with? Yes, yes, absolutely. All the uh, all the same people, all the current people. And how did you hit upon them? Uh, did you collect them all over the planet? <laughs> big big musicians and stuff. Um, well, PJ uh, PJ the singer has been with us uh, ten years now, uh, so he's a kind of staple member of the of the band now. Um, some of the other players have, have developed over the years. Uh, M Manny, the keyboard player, he's also been with us a long time. Um, but we've got a fairly new uh, bass player. He's been with us maybe three years now, Guy Erid. And the, new, the newest member of the band is um, a guy called Todd Cooper, who plays, uh, who, who's not only a singer, he's a, he plays saxophone and uh, a little bit of guitar and percussion as well. So. It's not, it used to be a six six piece band, now it's a seven piece band. So we we make a bigger noise than we used to. So. You talked uh, about some some time ago. You talked about uh, doing iRobot and stuff like that with a big orchestra. Is this idea still present in your mind? Well, we, we've done uh, we've done orchestral shows. We we just did one uh, a month ago in uh, in Florida, um, which was great. You know, it's it's always nice to play with orchestra, but it, it's it's always uh, economically difficult because you know the show. With orchestra costs, you know, costs a lot of money, and uh, you know you have to make you have to make sure that you have the right venue that that's going to sell out. Otherwise, everybody's going to lose money, and we we can't have that. We can't lose money on our work. So. You have to pay for like a hundred musicians, then. Not that many. <laughs> right. More, more like uh, more like thirty-five, I think. Is, is, uh, I, I think uh, I would like to play with forty, but. Uh, yeah. but is it fun for you to arrange things with a big orchestra oh, yeah, for stage? Fun. Um, the difficulty, of course, with um, with an orchestral show is, is the rehearsal time. If you only have, uh, say, three hours of rehearsal, that's that, that's really only time for about five or six songs. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to decide which songs you're going to play, and which songs you're going to do with just the band. Um, yeah, um, your career would have taken a very different path without you engineering Dark Side of the Moon, I think. Was this the, the milestone in your life? But you can say without that record, you, we wouldn't be here today. I think that's true. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm the first to admit that, and uh, I think the Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd themselves, would be the first to say that. Uh, but you know, they were fun times. I, I look, I look, I look back on it fondly, um, and I'm, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that for that period of my life. But uh, it, it did change. It did change the course of uh, of my career. No question. I think it changes the course of recording rock music at all. <laughs> uh, that's for you to say. Yeah, because I, I like to listen to this record because the sound is so brilliant. And mm -hmm. is it is it hard for you to to record with the new te technology today, or was it better to work with the old synthesizers and old stuff in the Pink Floyd era? I, I think it was more fun back then. It was more challenging. You know, you are you had 
to deal with the limitations of uh, how many tracks you had. You know, we had only only sixteen tracks at that time. It was a sixteen track album, and um, it was uh, yeah. I mean, you had to battle with the technology. The the the, you know, the current uh, technology allows for unlimited number of tracks, unlimited amounts of uh, reverbs, delays, echoes, processing, all that stuff. So we, you know, we. Um, we used the recording studio to its full potential back then, and uh, you know everything was done with tape, tape and uh, acoustic uh, or mechanical devices for for, for record. You know. um, the Ellen Parsons project was or originally planned as a, a, a real studio project, and you never played live in your seventies or eighties. Um, is this the course you're playing very excessively live uh, nowadays, which is touring and yeah, doing no records, just playing live? I mean that's one, <laughs> arguably one of the reasons why I haven't uh, felt the need to to make a record with uh, with keeping the uh, keeping the uh, flame burning, as it were, uh, by by playing playing live. So, um, and I think uh, almost anybody from classic rock will tell you that they they uh, uh, pay the rent more effectively by playing live than, yeah. than by selling records. So, yeah, so it's 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 part of my livelihood now. I'm, 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 mind you, I'm not getting any younger. I don't. I can't do it. For, I can't do it for too much longer. <laughs> no one of us does. <laughs> getting younger. Um, tell me a bit about Stephen Wilson and the work with him. How did you hit upon him? And uh, is there planned something for the future to do um, with him? Well, S Stephen came to me. He um, he uh, contacted me contacted me through uh, through my website and. Um, his his manager was very uh, very gracious, and uh, we uh, first met on uh, on Skype and talked about uh, what he wanted to do with this album. And he basically said, "I I don't want to uh, engineer this record. I want to uh, play play with the band and have uh, someone like yourself, who is who is uh, you know experienced recording with a band playing together." And that's exactly what it was. It was a joy to 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 see. Uh, a, a full band, uh, you know, all playing together in one place, one time. And I think you hear it. I think when you, when you hear the album, you think, "Wow, this is a band playing." Yeah, it's, it's a great album. But um, is there a plan for some further collaborations with him? I, I would love to. Um, he's he's actually coming to a show uh, we're doing in in Stuttgart next weekend. So uh, uh, looking forward to seeing him again. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk about uh, doing something together. But I, I would like to do that very much. Can I ask you one wolf song question yeah. at the finish? Um, I just wanted to know what was going on in your mind when you heard first he passed away. Well, it, it was it was a, a huge shock um, because uh, I knew he wasn't well, but uh, I, I didn't really uh, think that uh, you know he would he would pass away quite so suddenly. He he was uh, very I think he was very brave about his illness. He. Uh, he he chose not to uh, share it with anybody. He chose not to tell people that he was unwell. Although I knew his family well enough to to, to have been kept informed. But um, I was uh, actually on tour with the the night of the proms, uh, the day the day the news uh, came through, and uh, I made an announcement on stage, and it was a very very emotional moment. And then uh, two days later, I managed to fly. I think it was out of Stuttgart into uh, Glasgow to, to go to the funeral, and then back back to uh, back to Stuttgart again for uh, for the for proms show. But uh, we did good work together. I I, uh, I look upon our, our uh, years together very fondly. Uh, one last question: Why the seats in there? Why the seats? <laughs> yeah. I think our generation likes to uh, likes to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, I, I didn't know that normally they didn't have seats. The, the, it's normally standing, mm -hmm. a standing venue, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, maybe a um, combination of uh, our audience wants to be comfortable. And our audience is you know, 50 plus. You know, yeah. They're not, they're not going to be uh, <laughs> dancing in the eyes. They're, they're going to feel uh, better, I think. Yeah. And uh, also, maybe it'll look like there's more people in there with seats now. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, was a pleasure yeah. talking to you. Um, hope the gig is nice. And uh, yeah, have a nice evening in Austria, first time in Vienna.